Let's look at some equipment real quick. You're going to need some kind of storage building. Put your tools in, keep things out of the weather. How about compost facility to recycle all this stuff that you're going to make, all the waste stuff? Uh, there's several bin material that you have, a, just, a, just a big pile. I don't like that because everybody, all the cats and dogs can dig through it. I like this confined. I just mix this back and forth until I get it composted, and then I'd move it to a storage over here. There's several ways to use that type of a system, three bin system, but that's the way uh, I prefer to use it. Now, if you're interested in growing worms, you want to develop and to produce a superior plant food naturally, you can't beat the worm deal, okay? It's gonna be more plant available sooner than microbial con the heat composting. That worm casting there is <laughs> it's the ideal stuff for starting plants and as a supplement side dressing for your vegetables. Now, you know, you just don't produce tons of it like you could a, a heat pile, you know, or a, a microbial composting system, but it's a pretty cool way to, uh, to produce fertilizer that's really plant available. And guess what? With the worms, they reproduce. You, have to, you can harvest them and sell them or feed them to your chickens. Oh, my goodness. You're going to need some way to prepare your stuff, right? Wash it, clean it, get it ready to take inside. Don't haul all this dirt inside the kitchen. There's all these uh, types of products available that you can purchase, you can install, or build your own from scratch. One thing to consider, though, what are you going to do with all that water? You need to recycle it, right? Store it. Don't let it just run across the lawn after you've, and just you know, turn to a mud hole. Recycle it. Put it in a bin or something, pump it back out, and reuse it in the garden. Don't waste it. You know, we all have seen root cellars. We've been down in them. If you've got a winter squash, potatoes, this is an, one way that you can store them cheap, just use an old fr refrigerator. You need to vent it, right? It'll just turn, it'll get moldy and mess, musty in there. But it's a great way to keep, use the earth to moderate the temperature. Store it like that. Winter and summer, it's a pretty good method to store stuff. What about this stuff that comes from above we can't control? And I'm talking about hail. I'm talking about insects, large insects, grasshoppers that might fly in. Is there anything we can do? Well, yes, there is. Uh, commercially, this is what they do. And they cover the whole thing with this hail net, insect screening, and it's very expensive, but you produce a superior product depending on the market you have. This pays. So why don't we take that to the backyard food system and look what this gentleman has done. Isn't that cool? Look how nice and neat that is. The whole garden is underneath this hail net. And it's, everything is excluded. There's no critters that can get in there, no, in, no uh, uh, beetles, no grasshoppers, the hail, okay? And so we walk in, we take care of business as we walk out. Now, what I'm suggesting you do is think about just covering your whole backyard with something like that. <laughs> I mean, okay, yes, it's kind of expensive, but it is so convenient and it is so uh, beneficial. If you have a hoop house frame, you can use the same concept, use it to support. This is a, uh, an insect screen. This method is going to be a little cheaper because all you're using is post and wire. You're not getting freeze protection with that, so I would put my hoop house inside. I'm, okay, we're just thinking outside the box now, right? Keep the hail off the plastic all right. Y'all, you didn't have to pay for this, so. <laughs> Rainwater harvesting, fairly expensive method, uh, especially if we get serious about storing large volumes of water, usually about a dollar uh, a gallon to store water. That's just a general price. But this is an interesting fact uh, that, you know, doing some research on this, 35, 36 inches in Ardmore, uh, annual rainfall, but the annual potential is 22 gallons per square foot of roof area. Whether that be on a, from a hoop house, from your dwelling, from an outbuilding, it adds up. Think about that. That's a lot, that's, that's 20, 30, 40,000 gallons. That's a lot of water. And it's good quality water. And how much of this stuff just leaves our property? I sit, sit in front of my front door you know, and watch, you know, on a big rainstorm, three inches of water deep down the curb, just going down. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's filling up Lake Murray, but what is that? That doesn't do me any good for my food, backyard food factory, right? So keep it. Keep it from running off your property. There's different systems. This is a very large uh, tank. I wonder if there's regulations about this. 
Okay, in conclusion, here's where we're going. Before you do this, we talked about goals. And plan, plan it before you plant it. Plan it before you build it. Plan it before you spend money on these different components to put your components together. Um, get some graph paper out. I mean, this is the old way of doing it. This is what I do. Uh, there are some computer programs that you can, you can purchase to do some home garden planning and stuff. Play around with it. List everything you want in your garden and then start putting it. Remember where I said you, you, you need to have certain light for certain vegetables. You need to put, uh, you know, uh, your fruit trees in a situation where they're not going to uh, shade part of your garden. You can grow some things under the, the fruit trees. What would that be? You don't want to put your hoop house. You're really, your buildings ought to be around the periphery, as close to the border as possible. Because they're going to, if they're out in the middle, they're going to shade stuff. Get them close. Put all your the business end right out in the middle and do that. But there's a lot of different variations on that theme. Put it on paper, show it to, you can bring it by my office, we can discuss it, you can talk to your friends about it, but plan it. Okay, so what does this look like in the real world? Look at some of these, these neat, neat gardens people have built. Isn't that beautiful? Look, it's a mixture of beds and containers. My goodness, that's a food factory, guys. Isn't that something? Uh, they're using uh, you know, cardboard here, and of course they're using vertical space efficiently. Okay, check this one out. Look at all these components we've talked about. Storage building, a little bit of a, a greenhouse, lean-to greenhouse. Here's another greenhouse. Look at the vertical space, raised beds. Look at all the containers. This is not functional fence in terms of wildlife control, but it's kind of quaint, isn't it? Reminds me of Grandma's garden. And this is kind of a survival. I look at this and I'm thinking, man, this is somewhere up in Canada or somewhere in Alaska. Very functional. You look at all the components here. Netting, hoop house, some small mini tunnels, and then all these beds. Pretty cool. All right, I'm done.